Hello and welcome. Yes, lovely ones, I have made a strange commitment. I was guided, as always, by my heart, and it told me to share my story, to share my journey beyond. And of course, when it comes to the action, the enthusiasm and all the excitement and the spontaneity kind of fade for a moment because then you are here preparing trying to make notes or a map but in some ways this is not what this is all about storytelling is not something that has been written it's often something that is shared and so it is about remembering, but not remembering in a sense of memorizing. It is remembering the wholeness of who we truly are. So are we conscious of the signs that are really showing up? A question that I actually had from a very young age. As a little boy, I liked to climb up high trees. I was fascinated by being able to see beyond. And for me, how, how I cannot explain. But I knew my life was all about beyond. Seeing beyond, going beyond. And also beyond that physical self. So climbing up a tree was like climbing up into my higher consciousness. Trees are signs. Trees carry wisdom. I would hug the trees without knowing that I was hugging. I was connecting to that wisdom, to that infinity. But also I was conscious of connecting to all nature. So as I climbed, it was not was like I was also connected in the roots, in that beautiful network that really holds the trees, but communicates. I could also be transported so easily into a higher world, a higher consciousness, a meditation. As a three, four, five, six year old, you, you don't really think like that. And I was often told, no, 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 you need to fit in, fit in. Why don't you fit in, Patrick? Just be normal. I was just an imaginary guy. My mother was an Eucharist and had a beautiful Caroline-made candle where she used to carry her bees actually from one place to the other. But at that time of my childhood, it was stationary. So we would spend weekends there and I would have a lot of time to stroll and stroll around, picking berries, connecting with nature, having magical conversations, and stepping through portals. I am space. But when I came back into the world, my life was really difficult. And there was a point when I gave in. I said, okay, I try to be what you want me to be, but I will keep just a tiny little bit of Patrick somewhere. So as I was conscious of the signs within me and above me or beyond me, I was also conscious about the world I was living in. Going to school, getting marks, studying, learning something. When I first said I want to be a musician, I said, no, 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 you can't do that. Played clarinet, I played accordion. Was a very 
enthusiastic singer. Music school, 11 years. And you don't want me to be a musician. The external world, the way I read it, always put me in a box. Couldn't find my rhythms, except when I was really put in, climbing trees, playing music, writing, dreaming. But I wasn't just dreaming, I was dreaming about a new world. And so this first part of my life was really interesting. But it set the scene for these signs of consciousness that the external world is not necessarily my internal world. And I was very clear. I was also clear the world of that consciousness of the trees and the nature or the elements even was not the same as it was projected on the outside, as the signs that I read in the boxes I tried to fit in. There was another event, I'm not chronological. Once in a, in a rebirthing ceremony, I went to the place before my soul entered this physical body and this life. And it was very interesting, exciting. Watching a movie about this guy doing all kinds of crazy things. Looking beyond breaking stories. I was just watching. And there was quite a lot of souls with me watching that movie. Patrick's life. And when it finished, an angel was beside me. And I said, who, who wants that kind of love? The angel smiled at me and said, you, me? I said, well, on many levels, I've done many of these things. The angel took me into a space to show me and emphasize on what was really happening from 2012 and beyond. And the angel said, you know, you're just preparing. From 2012, things will change. This is what you're going to do. And here we were, the angel and I. And I questioned and I asked more things. And the angel said, well, you will be always guided. And you always see beyond. And the journey till 2012 will be very exciting. You're going to love it. So... I was still not too convinced. And so I said, but there are many people here, maybe somebody else, another soul would like to take that light. And then when I looked around, there was nobody there. So the angel laughed at me. He said, no, it's you. And I could sense that choice that I made in my mind to be here at this time to go through whatever I had to go through. And it was clear that that life was the best I could possibly choose for this time. So no, there was no force, there was no manipulation, there was no convincing necessary. Once I understood that this life would bring together the wholeness of me, so that I could be on this ascension journey that the earth was on and I could be who I was meant to be 
and this is how I came in. So that wasn't always easy. And what else happened, of course, um, is very interesting. At each part or very important section of my life, and again, this is not chronological, this is not about only time, an animal always came to me. Of course, in the shamanic world, we refer to spirit animals or power animals. I like spirit animals better. And in that in that space of not being quite enough in an external world, feeling a little bit like a victim because I felt misunderstood. In that space where I was seen a bit imaginary and different, who came to me at that time was of course a hummingbird. And the hummingbird is not just the smallest bird that can fly so fast and stand still in the air. It has much more. And so it helped me to break that story that I'm depending on an outside world, on the external situations, um, circumstances, family, work, school, It really helped me to break through to that, knowing that it existed, but kind of recognizing at the same time, yes, way on top of my tree, I could see beyond it. And the consciousness was not only in that physical, rational, logical, external world. And I just recently read a beautiful quote from Albert Einstein. He said, with logic, you get from A to B. With imagination, you get anywhere or everywhere. And I feel this was a little bit the part of my first life, first part of my life, to understand that it's okay to live beyond. It's okay to go beyond the conscious, physical, linear, rational realms. And so when the hummingbird came, it was really that stepping into the impossible, accepting more the soul in me that I always felt, the heart in me that always guided me, whether it was in music or writing or imagining. And so the hummingbird came to me, of course, in Jamaica, and I remember I had very, very profound, profound moments with Hummingbird, allowing me to break that story that I was a victim to an external world. As a tour guide, I, I had a, so much freedom. There was, in a way, some things I should do and visit and all of that, but at the end of the day, it was freedom with relationships, with people, with animals with the island did not have any limitations and so the hummingbird always came to me when I was down always came to me to lift me up of course I continued to play my, my clarinet I continued singing I even continued at this time to play in the accordion and I continued writing and I realized that maybe I'm a stranger in an outside world but not in an internal world and surely Jamaica is, is a home to me it's easier for me to be in Jamaica than many other places Peru also works for me especially here in the gym Indonesia also works so that story that needed to be broken was that it was okay to see beyond. It was okay to be me beyond that physical experience of Patrick. And I didn't have to be anything. And in that 
journey to me. I followed my guidance, I followed my heart, not the A to B. And so this is the first part that kind of takes you a little bit into my childhood in context of maybe even how it looks now. The joyful kid that climbs trees and is in nature, but also is incredibly sad that he wasn't like the others. And yet knowing it's okay. And yet knowing there was so much more. And this is where I want to leave this first story. There's so much more. And indeed, there's three more stories coming. So I brought the story of just being this physical Patrick in this world that I lived. In a way, knowing that I didn't fit in, I still pleased in many ways, but I knew I didn't fit in. So that was an important story to break. I was still squeezing a bit, but... It was okay and in a way of course maybe this is the message for today when, when you're reading the signs consciously what came out of that first part for me was I knew there was a place where I could fully be me when I played music when I wrote when I was in nature when I was daydreaming or meditating, I could be fully me. And it wasn't like I had to break the boundaries of what is maybe called the 3D reality. It was, I've never lived in it, but when I'm interacting in the 3D, or when I was interacting in the 3D world at this time, I squeeze, then I try to please. At the same time, I broke that story knowing that this was not all. Yeah, it wasn't all that easy to, uh, to tell the story of my life beyond. But here is the first one. I didn't have too many notes because I'm not allowed to. Not allowed to. I, I, I felt it wasn't necessary. It needed to be spontaneous so every part shows you how i broke my stories how i healed how i functioned in different ways with the consciousness in a physical but much more with the consciousness beyond so for today i hope you enjoyed it let me know how that works for you how that resonates, if it reminds you of something of you, if it helps you, if it inspires you. Very happy to hear from you. And catch you tomorrow for number two.